What's up, YouTube? I'm going to try this again. I'm literally the worst. I just did this whole entire video. Like 20 minutes long. The whole thing. And I went to upload it, and I realized there's just no audio on it. Like, I'm just on the screen with talking, and nothing's coming out. So, um, I'm freaking pissed. Um, anyways, yeah, so what I wanted to do is, uh, I'm going to start doing these quick reactions. I guess it's not that quick. I should have done this Tuesday morning, which I'll do from now on. Uh, right after the weekend, after all the games are played, I'm going to uh, basically go game through game of the NFL week and uh, talk about things that happen in each game and uh, the fantasy implications, uh, whether it be injuries, who played well, who didn't play well, who did work, who's going to do work, all that shit, who you should pick up, who you should drop. Things like that. So, uh, let's get started with um, the Thursday night game, which was the Seahawks and the Packers. And, um, sorry, give me one sec. Yeah, okay, so Eddie Lacy uh, got another concussion, which is his second in, like, a calendar year, I think it was. And um, he's running through protocols, though, uh, and he should be back for week two. So, there's nothing to worry about there. Don't even think about getting rid of him. He, uh... He'll still be an elite RB1, um, and he's going to get his double-digit touchdowns, 1,200 yards at least, probably more than that um, by the end of the year. So uh, nothing really went well for the Packers against the Seahawks defense, which is – I'm one of those assholes who will not pick a defense before the second to last roundish. Like, I like to stream defenses week to week depending on opponents, and usually that just never works out for me, so I don't know why I keep doing it, but um, – Good for whoever reached for the Seahawks defense a few rounds early. Uh, there's always those people, and then there's the guys who make fun of them, and I'm usually that guy, like an asshole. But, um, yeah, they're the real deal. They're going to put up points this, this year. If they could do it against the Packers offense, they'll do it against anyone. And uh, Marshawn Lynch, still the real deal. I don't know what that bullshit was that he's not going to get as many touches because the backups are going to get in and get more touches. They want to start making them. This is like a win. This is a win-now league, the NFL, man. They don't give a shit about next year. Uh, if, if they're thinking they're going to win a Super Bowl this year. Yeah, so Marshawn Lynch is easily an RB1. Uh, good for whoever used their first-round pick on him. Um, next game, game of the week, my Dirty Birds. Falcons came away with a huge win, huge points, uh, fantasy-wise in real life. So um, the Falcons look great on offense. Matty Ice, Roddy White, and Julio uh, primed for a huge year. Um, yeah, so Keaton, that's my uh, Roddy jersey in the background. So, uh they're yeah they're gonna keep they're gonna keep doing work so um nothing to worry about there in terms of injuries or anything Roddy White left the game for a little bit but he'll he'll be fine um in terms of the running backs though that's a sticky situation uh there's no one really that you could trust on that team to start Anton Smith had a touchdown Jacquez Rogers had a touchdown Stephen Jackson got the bulk of carries but I don't know it's hard to say I'd keep Stephen Jackson on the team for now because as he gets healthier I'm sure he'll get more touches but I don't see him having uh, a huge year. I mean, most drafts he went really late because people didn't see him having a huge year. So it's not, it's not a huge deal that um, that he didn't put up big numbers yet. He still has potential to do so. So don't drop him so quickly. For the Saints, uh, I think the biggest takeaway was Brandon Cooks. A lot of a lot of buzz in the preseason. Him and Drew Brees had a great great connection, and it turned out that it was true. Eight touches, ninety five yards, and a touchdown. Um, I drafted him on a bunch of my teams, so I'm happy about that. Great PPR uh, player for this year. Um, I do want to say, though, as a Falcons fan, I've watched him. They're horrible against slot receivers. So um, most of the time, a player like that is going to put up really good numbers against the Falcons. Um, also, Kenny Stills is out, so uh, there's more targets to be had. Um, big game for Brandon Cooks. Definitely a good player, but I wouldn't use this as a... Uh, as a benchmark for what he's going to do week in and week out. If you could sell him really high, go for it. So, uh, yeah, that's about that. Vikings Rams, let's see. Corderell Patterson, also a lot of preseason buzz. Uh, well worth it. Didn't do great in the receiving game, but he got his touches in the rushing game. He looked all He was, might have, he could be a fucking running back for most teams. Um, so he's going to get his in one way or another, whether it be rushing yards, whether it be receiving yards, touchdowns. Um, Awesome, awesome year he's primed for. If you need a deeper receiver, Greg Jennings is your guy. Six catches, 58 yards, and a touchdown, I think. Um, him and Matt Castle have 
great chemistry. And not, probably a lot of people don't know this, but if you look at their past stats, they, they do really well together when they're on the field together. Uh, people think he's probably old, washed up, or whatever, but he's 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 really he's really good with Castle when they're on the field together. So if you need a deep receiver, he's definitely one to look for. Um, in terms of the Rams, they looked awful on offense. Um, I think they put up no points. They uh, they switched quarterbacks after being down like thirteen uh, nothing. People were worried about Stacy. Uh, should still be worried about Stacy. He had 12 touches as opposed to Cunningham's nine touches. Cunningham got the receptions. Uh, Stacy will get the goal line work, but for now, um, he's definitely dropped down to like a mm, an RB two. I want to say maybe a low end RB two. If you have better options, definitely worth playing because who knows what the fuck's gonna go on with that offense this year. To be honest, go Cleveland Pittsburgh. Okay, a lot to talk about. Ben Tate went down with the injury. I'm gl- really glad I picked him in like three of my leagues. He really screwed me this week. Um, Terrence West and Kroll came in and did a really good job as rookie running backs. West, 16 touches, 100 yards. He's the back to own in the, in that situation. I don't think he's going to put up great numbers. I don't see him hitting 100 yards every week. But um, if you're going to use a, a free agent uh, waiver wire or whatever, uh, Terrence West is your guy for running back. Probably a low-end RB2 for now until we see something more because he was terrible in the preseason. But he looks good now. Uh, deeper wide receiver, especially for PPR, Andrew Hawkins is your guy. Uh, he didn't, he played the last few years in Cincinnati. He hasn't really got the shine. They didn't look his way that much, but now in an offense where he's going to get a lot of looks, he's going to get a lot of targets, a lot of receptions, good PPR pickup if you can get him. Um, Pittsburgh looked awesome first half. They were killing it. Uh, Le'Veon Bell looked like fucking Adrian Peterson, um, Catching the ball, running the ball, touchdown, 200 yards I think he had. Um, people were worried about LeGarrette Blunt getting a lot of his touches. He had four touches. He did get goal line carry, um, which could end up biting Bell in the ass because I don't see he's not going to put up 200 yards every game and he's going to need the touchdowns in order to put up points. But for now, he looks really good. Um, so good for whoever drafted him. We got Jags Eagles. I thought the Jags were going to fucking win this game. But um, sorry, I'm going to start moving a little quicker on this shit. I curse way too much. Um, okay, Alan Hearns, the big story for the Jags. Uh, he's a guy I actually drafted in a couple of my leagues. He Every preseason game, he did really well, catching a lot of balls, for putting up really good production, really efficient numbers. He was a deep wide receiver uh, in many drafts, and now I'm sure he's going to be one of the hottest pickups on the waiver wire. I wouldn't go crazy about him just because uh, Cecil Shorts was out. And that will take away targets for Hearns. He only caught, I think, four balls. So um, he's going to need big plays if he's going to put up points. And uh, But him and Chad Henney have good chemistry, so that's definitely someone to look uh, keep an eye on. Gerhardt will keep getting his touches. He got hurt, too, another injury this week. Um, people were so high on Gerhardt, they're saying he's a workhorse, bell cow, whatever, whatever, he's going to get all these touches. But let me get in an offense that doesn't get to the fucking goal line, how many points are you going to put up, you know? He's not busting away 30-yard runs to put up his own points. I mean, uh, he's a volume runner. He's going to get the touches, which is going to equal fantasy points, obviously. But I wouldn't go crazy about Gerhardt if you're trying to buy him, sell him, whatever. Um, yeah, whatever. Uh, so the Eagles, nothing to worry about here, nothing about McCoy. Um, he's going to get his touches still, put up the numbers. And Zach Ertz, player I put in my last uh, video of players outside the top 180p who will finish inside the top 50. Zach Ertz was my guy, put up a big week, and he's a wide rec- uh, tight end one moving forward, probably top six, top seven from here on out. The more he plays, the more numbers he's going to put up. The dude's a beast. Raiders Jets, nothing nothing from the Raiders side really. Their run game looked not good. MJD got the bulk of carries, so it's what we expected, but nothing productive. Decker led the uh, Jets in targets, which is also what we expected, so good for PPR. I don't know how many touchdowns he's going to end up putting up, but he's their lead guy. Both running backs look good, uh, Chris Ivory and CJ. So uh, they're both ownable. More flex plays, though, because you don't know what's going to happen week in, week out. Chris Ivory's not going to bust out fucking 70-yard touchdowns every week, and I'm sure CJ won't get in the end zone every week, too. But both are definitely uh, backs you could own. Bengals-Ravens. A little uh, division matchup. That's what we got here. Uh, Gio Bernard to Jeremy Hill, 20 to 4 touches. Uh, some people expected Jeremy Hill to match his touches and 
things like that. Gio got all the touches. He was catching the ball, running in between the tackles, taking goal line work. Um, so nothing to worry about there. They're saying Jeremy Hill is going to get more touches as the season goes on, which is definitely something that will probably happen. But Gio's still the uh, Gio's still the guy there. Their offense kind of runs around him. So um, something concerning about the Ravens, Torrey Smith, um, Steve Smith. And Dennis Pitta had 15 receptions each. So Flacco was looking their way way more often than Torrey Smith. But uh, don't give up on Torrey Smith. He's still, I think he's still a lock to be wide receiver too by the end of the year. Um, he's going to get more targets. He's going to get way more catches. He has a big playability. Uh, Steve Smith is definitely a good uh, waiver wire pickup if you need a receiver though. So same with Pitta. Even though Pitta should have been, there's no way he's on the waiver wire uh, for your league if the people you're with know anything about fantasy football. The run game, okay, Ray Rice is out. Good for him. Um, I was just kidding. Um, I think Justin Forsett is the back to own. People have so, been so high on Bernard Pierce, I have no idea why. I feel like every, they're all, oh, he's the kid, fucking, he's going to get all the carries. Uh, so, but I've never seen him, like, do, have a good game. I don't understand what all the buzz is around. Every time, I pick him up a lot, and I've played him before, and he's only disappointed me. Uh, so Justin Forsett's a vet who can play well. He stepped in last week, did did well. So I think he's the back to own. But obviously the run game's not great there, so you'll have to wait and see. Bills versus Bears. Duh, bear, duh, bear, duh, bears. Okay, both receivers, Alshon and Brandon Marshall, left the game at one point because of injuries. Alshon, the hamstrings, didn't play at all um, after the injury. Marshall came back and did well, so he's nothing to worry about. Alshon, they say, is day-to-day. Jay Cutler looked good, put up big numbers. I think he's going to struggle against good defenses, though, to be honest with you. He uh, forced a lot of balls, and he made a couple stupid plays. So I think um, playing him against bad defenses is a good move. Playing him against good defenses is not so good move. Um, just warning you now. In terms of the Bills, okay, they're running backs. Let's see. Fred Jackson's still going to take the goal line work. Spiller had 18 touches, though, which is really good. He wasn't efficient. He didn't put up great uh, production in terms of yards per touch and things like that. But you keep giving a guy like Spiller 18 touches a game, he's eventually going to start breaking out. He's going to put up the 50-yard runs. He's too explosive not to. You know what I mean? So um, that's a really good sign for C.J. Spiller owners. The 18 touches will equate to fantasy points eventually. Skins Texans. Um, RG3 got hit 14 times in this game. That's absurd. I think, the, I think the Skins hit the Texans quarterback maybe four or five times. He was under pressure the entire game. Uh, he had to settle for dump offs. He wasn't able to run the ball, get out of the pocket. So, don't sell RG three. Don't drop him from your team. He still has a ton of potential to finish as a top six, seven, eight quarterback. So, um, don't give up on him yet. It's just still week one. People are simmer down. Okay, and for the Texans, we have uh, Aaron Foster. People were so low on Aaron Foster this. Uh, so obviously I saw him fall to round four in some of my league, uh, 10 team leagues, but um, I mean mock drafts, but um, he got 27 touches. They ran the ball 33 times as opposed to passing for 22. So their offense is all based around that. People really didn't like him because they thought he was very injury prone, which he is, but he looked fine. And as long as he's healthy, he's going to be a, an elite RB1 um, for the Texans with those amount of touches. Titans Chiefs, you need a quarterback, Jake Locker. In deep leagues, you need a free agent quarterback, Jake Locker's your boy. Uh, tons of potential there. Uh, the O-line's awesome. The rushing ability is there, which is always good for quarterbacks. And uh, the wide receiver depth is actually is is present in Tennessee, man. They got Justin Hunter, the, uh, the big second-year receiver, it's prime for a breakout. Kendall Wright, we all know he's a good receiver. Nate Washington, a vet. Uh, Delaney Walker, an athletic tight end. So he's got targets all around there. Um, so he's definitely someone with a lot of potential in a deeper league. Uh, the Chiefs, we knew, I don't know. We know there's no one on offense there to help him out. Um, I picked up Travis Kelsey and started him in one of my leagues, hoping for a little breakout. I think he's got a lot more chance of having a Big week this week against the Broncos. Obviously, they're going to be it's going to be a shootout because the Broncos are going to put up 40 points, and the Chiefs are going to need to answer back with passes. So Kelsey's a guy if you need a tight end, definitely look his way. Um, Jamal Charles, don't even worry about him. He's going to get his 25 touches from here on out. It's still an elite RB moving forward, so don't worry about that. 
Pats versus Dolphins. Okay, so I think we figured out that Shane Vereen is the back to own in um, New England. Stephen Ridley looked like shit. Shane Vereen's catching the ball. He's running the ball. Um, their offense kind of runs around him. So he's definitely the back to own there. That kind of clears things up. And um, Gronk played limited snaps. He looked good in what he played. So just a matter of time before he's healthy enough to play all the snaps and goes back to Jimmy Graham status, if not higher. Um, Dolphins, the run game. No Sean Moreno, 24 carries, 120-something yards and a touchdown. Uh, good for whoever drafted him over Lamar Miller. Um, Lamar Miller still got like a decent amount of touches, double-digit touches, so he's going to get his share. But the more Moreno uh, proves that it wasn't just the Broncos offense that, that – uh, that helped him last year, uh, the more carry he's going to get. So he looked real good, <coughs> um, and he should continue to get the touches there. So um, if you can get him, uh, he could end up being an RB1 even, low-end RB1, something like that. So keep an eye on him. Uh, Panthers, Bucks, let's go. Oh, yeah, like I said before, I'm the asshole who streams their defenses and can't pick a good defense for some reason. Um I picked up the Bucks, thinking that Cam Newton's out. You know, Derek Anderson's going to come in. I'm about to kill. I'm going to kill it for me, right? I think they put up two points. Sick. Um, Bucks, really nothing going on offense. Doug Martin left the game with an injury, so he should be back next week. So keep an eye on that um, if he does come back. Um, he'll still be a low-end RB1, maybe an RB2. Um Definitely, if he's your RB1, if you're counting on him to be, then you're in some trouble. Go out there, trade for someone better. Um, Panthers, let's go. My boy, Kelvin Benjamin. This was a guy I said in the preseason was going to break out. Um, I put it in my last video. He was my one of my other players outside of ADP 100 that will finish inside the top 50, put up 92 yards and a touchdown. And honestly, I expect those numbers from him week in and week out being the, uh, being the top wide receiver in in Carolina, regardless of how shitty their offense can be, um, he's going to get the looks, he's going to get the targets, he's a big, tall receiver, good hands, so, um, Niners-Cowboys, this was a disastrous performance from Tony Romo, another guy you should not give up on, though, um, I know it just looked bad, but the more he gets comfortable, um, coming back from the injury, and the more time he gets back in the game, the more productive he'll be. He has tons of weapons around him, um, and their defense is so bad. They're going to let up a shitload of points. Uh, it's just, it's it's going to mean garbage points for Tony Romo. It's going to mean shootouts. It's just everything that you'd want working in a fantasy quarterback's like corner, he has going for him. So regardless if you don't think he's a great quarterback, He's finished inside the top 10 every year since like 2011, I think it was. So he's going to stay consistent. He'll put up, he'll be there at the end of the year. So don't worry about him. Don't drop him. Um, the Niners, Gore got his carries. Hyde looked really good. I think it's only a matter of time before Hyde takes over the majority of carries in that offense. Um, the more they learn to trust him, the more carries they're going to give him. So Colts Broncos, good game, good game. I'm, I really wish uh, we saw some OT there. Um Probably because I needed Demarius Thomas to get more points, but it's an awesome game still. Whatever. Um, yeah, so Andrew Luck looked good. Uh, Peyton Manning did his thing, obviously. Julius Thomas, huge game. Uh, what I took out of this was Monte Ball, man. I, I, I really was not high on him this preseason. I was not using a first-round pick on him. I don't even know if I would take him in 10-team leagues. I wasn't really looking at him as a second-round pick even. Uh He's unproven. He's I I don't know why you take a guy like Monte Ball over Marshawn Lynch. Um, I can understand the situation he's in. But clearly, after this week, we saw what Noshan did in in Miami. Clearly, he has the talent, and it wasn't just the product of the system there. So Monte Ball is going to have to show me something that says he's just as good, if not better, than Noshan Moreno. But just because he's in the Broncos' offense, he's going to put up numbers. Um, but it, who was not effective this week? Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know if I if I could sell Monte high, if I could sell him for like an elite receiver, if someone's really high on him. Um, I'm I'm getting him off my roster to be honest with you. Uh, don't worry about any any of the receivers on the Bron. Oh, Demarius Thomas obviously he's gonna uh, 
he he should be fine. He's going to bounce back, and he'll be an elite receiver for the next week. Emmanuel Sanders looked awesome, fucking diving everywhere for the balls. He looked like he looked real good. Like he is he is the real deal in terms of a uh, at least a wide receiver three. So uh, keep playing Sanders. The touchdowns will come. Touchdowns will come to everyone on the Broncos. G Men Lions. All right, the G Men's O line looked horrible. Um, people are hating on Eli already. But he has literally like one second to get the ball out of his hand. And it sucks because I was high on Victor Cruz this offseason. Um, but the amount of time that he has behind the pocket, Eli, it's just he's not going to be able to deliver the ball to his receivers, man. Sucks for Cruz. It sucks for Ruben Randall. Um, but hopefully as that, as they get more comfortable with the offense, it will progress. Something to keep an eye on. Um, Rashad Jennings is still, still your boy. Um, I was high on him, still am. He's going to get the touches. He got all the goal line work, nothing to worry about from Andre Williams. He's going to get catches. Um, so he is definitely, uh, I would definitely say he's going to finish as an RB1, top 12, maybe top 15 as a running back. Probably higher than, uh, definitely higher than top 15. But um, lines all around look good. Uh, Joy Bell is clearly the, the early down back. Both, both, whatever, they're both going to get touches, him and Bush, and they're both going to put up decent numbers, RB2 numbers. Um, Matt Stafford looked awesome. Easily going to finish top five quarterback by the end of the year. <sighs> Calvin Johnson was terrible again. I'm just fucking with you. Um, he's going to put up ridiculous numbers again this year. He'll probably break his own records. 45 touchdown catches, something like that this year. Uh, <laughs> Chargers, Cardinals, the last game of the week. Uh, good game, 18-17, and uh, Andre Ellington was one of the big stories coming in. He got hurt. People were initial reports. He's out four to four weeks or something. Uh, he ended up playing. He looked fine. He looked healthy. I don't know like what what's wrong with him. I know he's in a boot now, but that's just to make sure he uh, can heal correctly. Um, but he looked good. He's getting touches. They gave him a lot of touches, so clearly they're not that concerned with him as they saying that he's going to be their feature back. They'd be more cautious if they thought something was really wrong. So um, from that side, yeah, Michael Floyd looked awesome. Uh, Palmer looked good. He's definitely a low end QB1 from here on out, especially against poor pass defenses. He's chucking the ball up. They pass the ball a lot. Uh, Floyd is definitely going to be the top receiver in terms of fantasy uh, over Fitzgerald, which I've been saying all preseason, which is a lot of people have been saying. So um, he's chucking the ball deep to him. Both are definitely good wide receiver options, but Fitz barely got any targets. Uh, I think that will change, though. Um, Chargers, I mean, the Cardinals' run defense is ridiculous, so Ryan Matthews couldn't be that productive. He still put up a touchdown. I put up, I think, 12 points to standard leagues. Um, so he's, he's going to get his touches, probably 15 touches a game, maybe more sometimes, depending on how, how much they're going to rush the ball and the flow of the game. Uh, good, good, uh, RB2, probably high end RB2 with potential to be RB1 there. Um, he went a lot, he went real late in most, in most drafts, so that's good for whoever picked him up. And, uh, not much else came out of that game, I guess. So that's the last game I'm going to cover. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this shit. Okay, that was dumb. Um, but like uh, like this video, I guess, if you enjoyed it. And uh, subscribe, comment, I don't know. Do whatever you want to do. But uh, I will post another video soon. I don't know of what. But um, adios, YouTube.